Story 20. I walked in on my girlfriend's Zoom call. I, 30M, met my GF, 27F Katrina a couple of years ago through a group of friends at our workplace. We were thrown together in a few non-work-related situations, allowing us to develop a budding friendship. Eventually, we got comfortable enough to talk about our current love lives. Katrina was dating a guy she described as emotionally distant and verbally abusive. She was unhappy with her current boyfriend for a year and was still deciding what she wanted to do. I explained to her that I had just left a relationship because my last girlfriend, Anne, 30F, had taken a transfer to England for her job. We had discussed the long-distance relationship and both decided against it due to the distance and time. Kat decided to leave her abusive boyfriend and we started to see each other within a few months. We took it slow and didn't start a physical relationship for a few weeks after dating. The physical side of the relationship seemed lukewarm, even though the emotional side was blossoming. I just thought that she needed more time to get comfortable. This went on for a couple of weeks, and Kat started to stay at my apartment regularly since she had moved in with one of her friends from work, and it was awkward for us to spend time at her place together. The physical side of the relationship was getting better, and we were bonding. We had a lot of shared interests and made each other laugh. Things seemed like they were going well, but I kept getting a strange vibe from Kat whenever a subject came up around her ex. When we first started dating, she was vocal about how much of a jerk he had been, and she had ultimately left him because, during an argument, he had hurt her. He claimed it was an accident, but Kat said he was angry and had grabbed her arm and forced her into a chair as he stood over her screaming. The strange vibe continued and even got worse. Kat stopped being open to physical touching. Even kissing had diminished over a few weeks. One day on a Saturday, I was going to head over to a friend's house to help him move some heavy furniture. It was late morning, and Kat had just gotten up because she loved sleeping in on the weekends. I told her I'd return in the afternoon and asked if she wanted to go to a movie later. She said sure and told me to call her when I started home so she had time to prepare. I jumped in my truck and headed to my friend Jack's house. When I got to Jack's place and we were about to pick up the load, I remembered I'd forgotten the tie-downs. I didn't want loose furniture banging around in the truck bed, so we decided to swing past the apartment and grab them. Jack waited in the truck, and I ran up to the apartment and went in. My tie-downs were in the closet in our master bedroom. As I walked past the office, Kat was sitting at my desk with her back to me, looking at the big screen TV I had my console and computer hooked to as a monitor. There was a video playing that looked like a guy pleasing himself. The part that drew my attention away from the screen was that Kat was nude and had her feet up on the desk and her legs were open. I could hear the sounds of a vibrator humming and she was moaning. I got embarrassed for catching her self-pleasing until I realized the video that was playing was a live Zoom call between Kat and some guy. I was stunned when a husky voice asked her if she was going to come. As I walked into the office, the guy on the call yelled in surprise and said, I was behind her! Kat spun around to face me, still holding her toy. She started to freak out and tried to cover herself, then turned and cut off the Zoom without saying anything to her ex. She started saying something about it not being what it looked like, followed up by asking why I was home and demanded to know how long I had been standing there. I ignored her and said I wanted her to leave my apartment immediately. I pointed at the door and told her she had five minutes to get dressed, grab her stuff and leave. I went and grabbed the tie-downs and called Jack, saying he might as well come up since we'd be there for a few minutes. When he entered the door, Kat had put on her clothes and cried while trying to gather all her stuff. Jack asked if everything was okay, and I said yes, but we needed to wait for the cheating girlfriend to leave now that she was done having cyber with her ex. Kat started crying harder when I said that. She paused at the door and begged me to let her explain. I said she should have talked to me before I caught her having virtual sex with her ex. Jack got a sour look on his face and told her to get the F out. I ushered Kat out the door with her stuff and closed it in her face. Kat never came back to work. She contacted her boss later that day and quit without giving notice. A couple of mutual friends from work said she moved back in with her ex-boyfriend, who was eventually arrested for domestic violence. Guess who was on the receiving end? Kat ended up with serious issues for which she was seeing a therapist. She tried to contact me half a dozen times over the next year, but I never replied.
I was lucky that my relationship was still in the early stages, and I hadn't developed any deep emotional bond with her. It still sucked. Six months after we broke up, Anne returned from England and contacted me. She laughed and said the UK wasn't her cup of tea. Not kidding. After meeting up with her, it only took a couple of weeks to get back together. I can't even tell you how much of an upgrade she is. My advice for all of you out there is to pay attention to the red flags early in a relationship. Cat was just a bump in the road that forced me to get a new office chair. I only post new and unique content. Please like and subscribe.